Bullard indicating that they might look at selling some of the mortgage-backed securities as they also look at whether to sell some of the treasuries from their portfolio or at least to buy fewer of them. Let's talk a little bit more about the dynamics this is creating in the mortgage market. Let's bring in Andy Walden. He's economist and director of market research for Black Knight. Andy, it's great to have you here. Please explain this mystery for us. What is going on in the mortgage market? Yeah, I think what you're seeing is kind of a somewhat of a return to norm. If you look over the last five years or so, I mean, historically, there's been about a 2% spread between mortgage, uh, 30-year mortgage rates and 10-year Treasury yields. With all of the bond buying or mortgage-backed security buying the Fed has been doing, it's really tightened up those spreads. And so the increased spread that we're seeing is, is likely in response to kind of the expectation of a, a somewhat return to, to more of a normal market. And can you also tell us what the expectation is right now in the market for this tapering? I mean, what, what do they think is going to happen on the mortgage piece and on the Treasury piece? Yeah, and I think that's really what the market's trying to understand and, and kind of figure out. We're kind of in a phase where we're talking about talking about it right now, and so I don't think there's a, a set plan in place. And so I think the market's trying to determine and, and make expectations for where that may go, and it's, it's simply an unknown at this point. So if you're saying we're kind of going back to normalcy here in terms of the spread between the 10-year yield and the mortgage rate, I guess the question is, what does that mean for the housing market? If we've enjoyed a period where that spread was lower than normal, so mortgage rates are kind of lower than normal um, with what, everything going on in the 10-year, does that mean that we should expect to see rates edging higher now, even though the 10-year has slumped this week? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the long-term expectation. And when and where that'll take place and by how much and how quickly, I think, is still up in the air. But I think the broad expectation is for mortgage rates to kind of gradually or maybe even sharply at points rise over the next couple of years. In, in terms of what that means for the mortgage market, if we look at affordability even before this recent interest rate move, we were already kind of at a point in the, the housing market where we should start to see some inflection. We should start to see some slowing and deceleration to norm. This obviously pushes us farther up that chain. But the challenge in the housing market is that there's so little inventory that we're continuing to see red hot prices, even though your your quantity volumes, your lock volumes, your pending sale volumes are, are falling. Um, and so we're kind of seeing a dynamic where the housing market continues to rise faster than it should, even in a rising rate environment, because there's no inventory out there. Interesting. So basically, if we had, you know, all the supply we needed, we might already be seeing uh, prices correct a little bit more than than they had this kind of goes back to what we learned uh, today from Redfin, where they were saying that the housing market activity probably peaked around eight or nine weeks ago. Do you think there, there's some truth in that? Well, I think there's two different things to look at. One is quantities, right? So if you're looking at application volumes or optimal blue rate lock volumes on purchase lending or pending sale volumes, I think those could trend in a different direction than prices, um, simply because we're in, a, we're in an environment where we have 60% lower inventory than we should have. We continue to see new inflow of inventory run at 25% lower than it should be, and you can only sell what you're listing. So we could see quantities fall, applications fall, pending sales fall, at the same time, home prices continue to rise. That's so fascinating. So, you know, sort of spin this story forward a year or so, Andy, where are we in terms of housing market conditions, do you think? Well, I think that's really the, the question and the concern for the market, right? The question is, what happens to affordability? We know that we're relatively level now. We're kind of at a point where we should be slowing, but it's not overly concerning. Where are we at if home prices continue to rise like they are? And then we start to see some tapering and we see some sharp movement in 30-year rates. I think that really starts to put pressure on the housing market. So I don't think it's a known, but there's certainly a concern there of how that could play out over the next 12 months. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.